chapter 21. Had he known the way, Pip could have walked from the glow to the bear garden in a couple of minutes. But Robert Armin paused every few paces to chat with people in the street, and their journey took almost half an hour. Robert dropped a couple of coins into a beggar's outstretched hand, gossiped with the women selling bundles of lucky heather, and had earnest discussion about the war in Ireland with an old blind man. Robert stopped at the fruit store and bought six small apples. Here, he said, as they walked on, try these. Thank you, sir, said Pip. The first bite of the crisp white flesh reminded him that he hadn't eaten all day. He had chomped through apples after apples, stopping only when he realised he'd eaten five of the half a dozen. Suddenly, ashamed of himself, he passed the sixth back to Robert, who refused it telling him to keep it for later. They reached a circular building with high walls and no windows. This was the bear garden. On top of the wall, a large flag fluttered in the wind. Robert explained that the flag, just like the one on top of the globe, could be seen from the other bank of the Thames. If for any reason the day's performance had been cancelled, the flags didn't fly, warning people not to make the trip across the river. Several horses were tethered to wooden poles beside the entrance and a couple of boys stood nearby watching over them. When the owners came out of the play, they tipped the boys a penny for guarding their horses from thieves. Women were sitting on the grass selling food, food drinks, snacks, fruit at the gate. Men were taking money from anyone who wanted to see the show. I'm sorry, sir, said Pip to Robert. Could you lend me a penny? I'll pay you back, I promise. Robert laughed. You're still hungry? Well, what do you want? Cherries? Almonds? More apples? No, sir. I want to pay my way into the bear garden. Oh, we don't need to pay here. They know me. Robert glanced at the sky, trying to judge the time of the position of the sun. I'll come inside for one fight, just one. Then I have to go home and practice my lines for tomorrow. Come on. He led Pip through the crowd and headed to the gate. When the two doormen saw Robert, they jumped to their feet and slapped him on the back. Hey, clown, said one. How are you? Pretty good, thanks, the other doorman said. Going to tell some jokes for us? You can't expect me to be funny when I'm not working, said Robert. Fair enough, in you go. The doorman gestured at Pip. He's with you, is he? Indeed he is. Go on then, said the doorman, slapping Pip on the back so hard that he stumbled. Get inside. Last fight is just about to start. This isn't much of a garden, thought Pip. No trees, no herbs, no flowers, nothing but mud. Like the globe, the bear garden had no roof. The circular arena was open to the skies. The rain could enter and everyone would get wet. Unlike the globe, the bear garden had neither a stage nor galleries, just a low wall separating the audience from the action. People stood or sat on benches watching the show. Three brown fairy creatures were squatting in the centre of the circle. They looked like enormous moles. Those were the bears. Pip didn't give them more than a brief glance. Peering around the mob of faces, he searched for familiar features. But he couldn't see the weasel, scar, tooth or pig face. What about George Stone? If the weasel was telling the truth, thought Pip, this is where he met my father. Pip wondered whether after seven years of separation, he and George Stone would even recognise one another. Probably not. Just about any one of these men might have been his dad and he wouldn't even know. As they pushed through the crowd, searching for empty seats, Robert explained that the day's performance had almost finished. They had missed the jugglers, the fire eaters, the drummers, the pipers, the fencers, the wrestlers and the bull baiting but they were just in time for the main attraction, the bears. Let's sit here, said Robert, leading Pip to a small empty patch on a wooden bench between a group of raucous women and some preachers. As soon as they sat down, one of the women poked her finger into Robert's shoulder. Don't I know you? I don't think so, said Robert. I know you, I know you, I do. I think not, ma'am. Oh, yes, I do. What's your name? Where have I seen you before? Do you ever go to the Globe? All the time. We love the Globe, don't we, girls? 
There was a chorus of giggling and agreement from the other women. Then perhaps you've seen me in one of my roles, the merchant of Venice. The women were thrilled. They were sitting next to a celebrity, an actor from the Globe. They crowded round Robert, quizzing him for gossip, asking him all kinds of questions about life in the theatre and private lives of other actors too. Pip wasn't interested. He leant on the low wall that separated the audience from the ring and took a longer look at the bears. All three had silver rings through their nostrils and leather collars round their necks. Thick ropes tethered them to wooden posts buried in the ground. Although their brown fur reminded him of moles or mice, and their muscular thighs and shoulders made him think of badgers, he'd never seen anything quite like them. Apart from anything else, they were huge. As big as him, maybe even bigger. It was hard to tell right now because three bears were squatting or lying down having a rest before the battle began. One of the bears, the biggest, was sprawled on the ground and looked more like an enormous fur coat than a living creature. Another was snuffling the mud, digging a hole with its nose and front paws. The third and smallest and skinniest of the trio was sitting like a baby, legs outstretched, arms raised, wiping its face with its paws. Every now and then the bear lifted its head and looked around the stadium, staring at the crowd, watching its watchers. Pip stared back, hoping to make eye contact, but the bear didn't seem interested at him. A man in a long blue cloak put a trumpet to his lips and blew a long blast. Shouts echoed around the crowd. Last chance to bear, dead, dead dog gets you sixpence. Who give me two to one on Bruno? Bruno was the biggest bear, explained Robert. He didn't know the names of the other two. Men ran around the rim of the arena, jingling coins in their cupped hands, offering bets on the dogs and the bears. A short man with curly black hair stopped beside Pip and Robert. Which bear will die? You tell me, sir, Robert said. The baby? Which one, sir? Point him out. Robert pointed to the smallest of the three bears, that one. That's a good choice, sir. You obviously know your bears. I'll give you a sixpence if you're right. Just pay a tuppence now. No, thank you, said Robert. I don't bet. Just tuppence, sir. Tuppence gets you sixpence. Haven't you heard that gambling is a sin? This isn't gambling, sir. This is just a bit of fun. Haven't you heard the parishions preaching in the yard of St Paul's. They say that fun is sin. I couldn't go along with that, sir. If you ask me, there's nothing wrong with a bit of fun. I agree, but I'm still not going to give you a tuppence. Your last, sir, not mine. The man glanced at Pip, saw immediately from his clothes that he wasn't the type of person who could spare a tuppence and hurried onwards, calling out his wages. Tuppence gets sixpence. Come on, ladies, have a bet with me. Good afternoon, gents. What do you reckon, sir? Which bear will die? The man in the blue cloak lifted his trumpet to his lips again and blew another long blast. The gamblers made their final bets. People clapped and cheered. At the back of the bear garden, a pair of double doors swung open. A man stepped through the doorway and walked across the mud, surrounded by a crowd of ten dogs, their tails wagging, their heads turning from side to side, sniffing the air. The three bears pulled themselves to their feet, squatting on all fours, raising their heavy heads and warily watching the dogs. It was time for the fight to begin. Ooh, I wonder what will happen in chapter 22. Is there going to be a bear that gets hurt? Is a dog? going to get hurt. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Enjoy your four.